call to worship today is led by our kindergartners and our first graders. We did this call to worship in VBS this summer, um, and it helped us remember what the word compassion meant. That was our theme for VBS. And so this call to worship helps us remember what that big word compassion means. Good morning. Our opening hymn on this beautiful Sunday morning is hymn number 603, Jesus Loves Me. You can find this hymn in your order of worship or on your computer screen at home. We invite you to put your masks on, stand, sing, and worship together.
Father, and I am the child. I am your servant, O Lord. You love us and we love you. Peace. Amen. Well, good morning, and welcome to worship this beautiful fall day. Uh, it is, as you might have noticed, our children's Sabbath this day. This is the day when we take that call to let the children come unto me a step further, and we kind of reverse it, and we come unto the little children and let them lead us and teach us today. So thank you to all of them who have done that. Thank you especially to Cooper Ann for that lovely prayer of invocation she just gave us. If you happen to be visiting with us today, you have picked the perfect day to come and visit. Uh, and if you are, please, there is a little form you can fill out on the back page of your bulletin. Uh, that just gives us a little chance to get to know you some more. Uh, if you're more technologically inclined, there's a QR code you can scan on the front page of your bulletin. And that will take you to the, the page to fill that out. Uh, or if you're watching online, then that is on your screen and you can scan that QR code and that will take you. Uh, and now let us worship God. are such a joyful time in our church. They allow us to see the new life in our church family and their sweet faces remind us of God's love, grace, mercy, and faithfulness. With each dedication, you, the church family, promise to support the new parents and the child. You promise to pray for the parents as they guide, teach, and love their children. You promise to pray that the children, that the child learns of God's love and learns of how to be Christ followers. You promise to support the child by being a part of their lives and their learning. You promise to invest in them. I will now read the names of the babies who have been dedicated to God in the last year in our church. As you hear each name read and each refrain sung, pray for this child, their parents, and how you might best support them in the days and years ahead. Mary Gwendolyn Funderburg. Lindsay Elizabeth Rowe. God bless you, Lindsay, and keep her always in your care. Henry Patrick Lloyd. God bless you, Patrick, and keep him always in your care. Catherine Joanne Stevenson. God bless you, Keep her always in your 
if you've ever asked yourself, what does it look like to be actively involved in leading disciples? (laughs) I'm so pleased that you're here as First Baptist Greenwood joins churches literally around the world in celebrating Children's Sabbath. And we also today want to have a time in our worship to join churches all across the Cooperative Baptist Fellowship in celebrating and praying for global missions. CBF this year is having its first ever week of prayer for the offering for global missions. You can find some information about that in your order of worship to read after you get home today. You have already received an email from our church and you will receive another one each day through Saturday. Each email will have a short video about global missions or about our field personnel. And there will be two specific prayer requests related to global missions. Imagine tens of thousands, even hundreds of thousands of people praying specifically and intentionally what, for what God is doing through the field personnel of the Cooperative Baptist Fellowship. In our time of worship today, we want to launch this week with a litany written by our friend Nell Green, the Global Missions Advocate. I invite you to find that litany in your order of worship and read it with me responsively. I will read the light print And you will read the bold print. The litany is based on the appearance of the risen Christ on the road to Emmaus in Luke 24. Jesus came near to on the road. Jesus went with the two on the road. Jesus interpreted to them the things about himself in the scriptures. Jesus stayed with the two at their urging. Jesus sat at the table in fellowship with them. Jesus broke bread and gave it to them. Eyes opened, recognizing their Lord, hearts burning. They rushed to the other disciples to tell all that had happened. They became bearers of good news. Following the example of Jesus, CBF Global Missions field personnel cultivate beloved community, bear witness to Jesus Christ, and seek transformation in His name. God, We thank you for providing for the presence of CBF Global Missions field personnel through the offering for global missions. Jesus, be present to all of us, even as we are present to those in our communities and around the world, because presence matters. Amen. We come to the time now where we ask God's blessings on our gifts. I remind you that because of COVID, we're not passing the offering plates. But if you are in worship today, there's a basket in the narthex where you can leave your gift. And whether you are in worship or worshiping with us at home, you can scan the QR code or go to our website and give securely online. Now... Maddox Rhodes will lead us in our offertory prayer. Dear God, as we come today to treat people as you have treated us, thank you for letting our church family be here with you. Please help us connect with you today. Thank you for helping build our church family. Now we ask in your special blessing on the offerings given today. We pray that they will be used in the best possible way that is pleasing to you and will further your kingdom on earth. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
Our offertory hymn this morning is hymn number 272, They'll Know We Are Christians. You can find this hymn in your order of worship or on your computer screen at home. We invite you to put your masks on, stand and sing, and remain standing for the doxology. The white rose on the communion table is in memory of Mary Trigg Scott. In her memory, we would like to sing the first two verses of We've Seen a Rose. You'll find this in your order of worship. Please put your masks on and let's sing together. We've seen a Today, we remember Bill Allred, who is at NHC Rehabilitation. We express sympathy to the family of Trig Scott and to the family of David Johnson, who is the brother-in-law of Jim Sneed. For these concerns and the many others that we hold in our heart, we will.
Pray, led by Anna Elizabeth Turner. Loving God, please help us to be kind to all those around us. Please help us to love and try to understand other people have problems just like we do. Please help us have compassion for other people. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. We lift our prayers to you and ask you to help these people have a quick and easy recovery. We ask you to help them feel our love. Please help them to know we are praying for them to get better every day. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. In this silence, we lift our personal prayers to you today. In your mercy. Hear our and hear us now as we pray the prayer Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is Canaan will come now to read Colossians 3, 12 through 14. It can be found in your order of worship. God loves you and has chosen you as his own special people. So be gentle, kind, humble, meek, and patient. Put up with each other and forgive anyone who does you wrong. Just as Christ has forgiven you, love is more important than anything else. It is what ties everything together. The word of God for the people of God. Oh, my God. 
If you have been blessed by our children today, say amen. amen. Boys and girls, thank you for helping us worship today. I appreciate our children. I appreciate parents who are faithful to bringing the children here for the spiritual formation opportunities our church provides for them. I appreciate Anna Birch for her leadership of our children's ministry and for her leadership in this service. Though Anna is always very quick to share the credit with the children themselves, Anna continually reminds us that our children are not only the future of the church, but they are vitally important to the church right now. And one of the innovations under Anna's leadership is not only do the children lead worship on Children's Sabbath, but they are extensively involved in designing and planning this service. Because what our children have done on past Children's Sabbath has been so meaningful, my sermons have been rather abbreviated, and we as a staff even talked about whether I need to preach on Children's Sabbath. The staff is much too kind to cast it in these terms, but it's fair to ask, what does an old, white-headed preacher have a place in a Sunday that focuses on the youth and creativity and vibrancy of our children. As I thought about the question, I recalled a similar question in a similar situation from a very long time ago. In the first century, some people came to the Jewish fathers and said, what if our synagogue has been assigned an old senile rabbi, and we don't get anything out of worship. The Jewish father said, if your synagogue has an old senile rabbi, then bring your books and read and study. Use the time for ethical and theological reflection. After all, the father said, an hour of study is in the sight of the Holy One as an hour of prayer. I like that. So if my sermon today doesn't seem fitting or edifying, I want you to feel free to read and study and reflect. And I have some suggestions to help with that. Assignments, if you will. If your last name begins with A through F, I want you to read the text from Colossians 3 that Lily Keenan read so beautifully a few minutes ago in another translation. We've taken the Pew Bibles out because of COVID, but you can open a Bible on your phone because I want you to see that the text literally says, put on like clothes. Put on these virtues that we see in the life of Jesus. Paul says, clothe yourselves with the virtues that will make us more like Christ. A through F, I want you to think about putting on clothes as a metaphor for Christian discipleship. What is the value of the image? One place to start would be, why don't we wear the same clothes our entire lives? Because we grow. The clothes that we wore when we were young and immature are not appropriate for us after we grow into maturity. They don't fit. In the same way, when we were immature in our faith, we thought that it was enough to just have good intentions, just mean well. But as mature believers, we understand that faithfulness matters. Being faithful to God matters. When we were babes in Christ, we thought if we just love Jesus in our hearts, doesn't really matter then how we treat other people. 
But now we know that loving other people is precisely how we live into and demonstrate our love for Christ. A through F. What virtues are we wearing right now? And what virtues do we need to add to our discipleship wardrobe? G through L. I want you to read verse 12 from Colossians 3 and think about meekness and humility, the lost Christian virtues. In a culture that celebrates being brash, in a world where whoever was loudest and most insulting is declared the winner of the debate, in a time when meekness is scorned as weakness, what is the cause of humility? And what are the effects of humility? The cause seems clear enough. It's truly understanding our identity. It's really knowing who we are in Jesus Christ. If we really believe that God loves us as daughters and sons, if we really believe that Jesus gave His life to redeem us, if we really believe that the Holy Spirit of God lives in our minds and our hearts and our bodies, then we can be secure enough in our identity to be humble. What then are the effects of humility? Well, for one thing, we don't have to keep steering the conversation back to ourselves. <laughs> we can just listen. We don't have to choose behaviors that will call attention to ourselves. G through L. What are some other effects of humility that will move us toward Christ-likeness? M through R, would you read and reflect on what this text says about forgiveness? Forgiveness may be the most distinctly Christian of all virtues. How did Jesus live forgiving others? How did Jesus die forgiving others? <laughs> now I want you to read carefully what does the text say about forgiveness and what does it not say? It doesn't say forgive those who deserve it. <laughs> if they deserve it, it's not forgiveness. It doesn't say forgive when it's easy or convenient. It says forgive because this is what God in Christ has done for you. S through Z. Will you read and reflect on what this text says about love? Do you remember what Lily read? More important than anything else. That's unambiguous. Most important, put on love. Clothe yourself in love. Make love your standard uniform, your daily attire. Continually practice love. Children's Sabbath seems like a good time to confess that I have been brainwashing some children, particularly my grandchildren. Edward will be four in a couple of months. Thomas just turned two. And if I ask them, who loves you? They instantly reply, Papa. They respond like Pavlov's dogs because we have rehearsed the question and answer 
hundreds of times in their short lives, even before they were old enough to understand words. Ada is only two months old. I've already started with her. From the time they were tiny, I have relentlessly whispered in their ears, I love you. Papa loves you. Papa loves Edward. Papa loves Thomas. Papa loves Ada. The only accurate word is brainwashing. Why do I do this? Week before last, their parents were out of town for four days, so Nana and Papa went to keep them. Three children under the age of four. The third one makes a difference. We had to switch from a man to man to a zone. We were taking double shots of Geritol. On Saturday afternoon, I was putting down for his nap Thomas, barely two years old. I kissed him on the cheek and whispered in his ear, Papa loves Thomas. And for the first time, Thomas said, My love, Papa, too. A hundred times a day, with a countless variety of blessings, God whispers to us, I love you. Nothing gives more joy or hope to the heart of God then when we say, in word and deed, I love you too. Now, you all have your assignments, so if the sermon I'm about to preach doesn't give anything to you or draw anything from you, the sermon time will not be completely in vain. You know, on second thought, I don't really think I need to preach today. Our children have shown us the path. Let's follow them. Will you pray together with me? Thank you, O oh God, for our children. By choosing this morning's scripture, they have reminded us that the path is one of humility and forgiveness. By choosing the theme that they have chosen, they have reminded us that the path is one of compassion and kindness and love. Our confession this morning is that adult life offers so many detours, so many distractions from the path. Use our children to bring us back to the true path that leads to you. This is our prayer for our sakes for the sake of your church, and for the sake of your kingdom. Amen. God's word is always invitation to the people of God. If God has been at work in your life and you would like to talk or pray with a member of our ministry team, we would love to have that opportunity. If you want to talk about what it might look like for you to become increasingly engaged in the life of First Baptist Church, in the meantime, I invite you to use this final hymn in our worship today to pray or sing in a way that will strengthen your personal relationship with Jesus Christ as Keith Jamison comes to lead us as we sing. Our hymn of commitment and invitation is hymn number 656, Yesu, Yesu, fill us with your love. You'll find this hymn in your order of worship. 
or on your computer screen at home, we invite you to put your masks on, stand, and sing together.